studio with me right now is criminal defense attorney Lou Shapiro. He's going to sort of walk us through the lineup and how it works. Let's start at the beginning. How many people do you expect in a lineup? It's usually between eight and ten people of the same height, same weight, uh, similar body shape, similar color eyes, similar color hair. Uh, if it's a shaved head, everybody's got to shave their head for this lineup. And where do these guys come from? They're actually in-house. They are all inmates in county jail, and this is giving them an opportunity to kind of I guess it's a bit of a recreational activity uh, to get out and do something. Uh, that's fun. Oh, that's very interesting. What if you don't have that many in the jail that would fit this description or all look similar? Where do you go then? What pool do you go to? You know, they usually have uh, enough between the thousands of people within. There's Linwood, Pitches Detention Center, and local jail. There's enough. Uh, Are there any perks for these guys if they go into a lineup? Yes, they actually get a better dinner. Than everybody else that night. Okay, let's let's talk about the whole process itself. Uh, is there is there a glass? I mean, is it pretty much the way we see it on television? Is there a glass that separates uh, the inmates on one side and the witnesses on the other? Yes, there is that glass. The difference is you don't have the attorneys anywhere near the eyewitnesses. The eyewitnesses are supposed to make an identification purely on what they believe, what they think. Is it recorded? Yes, it's all recorded. And there's a, a photograph done of everybody in the lineup, so that way the defense counsel can later say, you know what, my client looked totally different than everybody. And what about questions? What about if the witnesses would have questions of the people in the lineup? Ah, the witnesses are not uh, permitted to ask questions. They are given a questionnaire that they can fill out issues that they have of doubt, like I'm not sure if it's number two or number three, but they actually can ask questions. Is there like a rating system? Like, uh, okay, that guy's, uh, I, I think he's like an eight. Uh, on the scale of 1 to 10 in terms of positive ID, and how does that weigh in the whole process? Yes, there is a rating system. There is like a 1 to 5 ratio of how sure are you, are you not sure. If you are sure, there is a way to write that person's name in. If you're not sure, you have to explain why. How important is this? You're familiar with the Brian Stowe case yeah. and, and uh, Giovanni Ramirez. Right. How important is this? Witness, there is apparently a good Samaritan who uh, interceded and tried to get the beating stopped in the parking lot. How important would be an ID from this witness? This comes down to everything. You don't have blood, there's no DNA. It's all about what the eyewitness saw. So in this case, the identification in a lineup really weighs heavily in a court of law. And would it have to be on a scale of one to five, as you mentioned, a five, a positive ID? Usually it has to be a positive ID or that leaves the defense with reasonable doubt. What other witnesses could they have uh, involved in this other than the Good Samaritan? Well, they could have maybe other witnesses who maybe were not sure at the time of IDing the person and now they're, they're saying, you know what, it'll jog my memory. So there could be two or three people that maybe saw it. Some are more sure than others. And we know that they are holding uh, Ramirez right now on a parole issue. In other words, they can hold him because he may or may not have violated parole. If they don't get this ID, does that blow their case? Yeah, there's no parole violation because that means there was no reason to really arrest him in the first place. It was a false arrest and he will be released probably. The fact that he's being alibied by people in his family. Yeah, obviously there's inherent motive there. But the defense can then say, well, what else is he supposed to say? I mean, family lives with family. That's a normal course of action for a family member to say he was home with the child. All right, Lou Shapiro, thank you so much. Thanks. And we hope to have some more information. Would it be normal for the LAPD to tell us whether or not the witness had ID'd? Uh, no, we won't find that out tonight. We won't find that out. Okay, thanks for giving thanks us for a heads me. up on that. Lou, thank you.